Morning, let's talk about trumpet vine. Come join me in the chaos. On this wall, I have a whole bunch of trumpet vines. Some here, some there. I had some more, but I cut it back. I don't want too much trumpet vine. It's a beautiful plant. Um, my favorite part about it, and the kids love, and yes, the, the sap inside of the plant, some people find it as an irritant. It doesn't bother me, but yes, disclaimer, you might be allergic to it. Most people, I have no idea what most people are. But anyway, the flowers, they're not. There's no problem with the flowers. And something fun that you can do, you can actually pull the flowers apart. And inside here, as you can see, there'll be a fair amount of nectar. And that nectar, it's very sweet and delicious. And you can just kind of suck on the tube. This is what hummingbirds do. Hummingbirds love these things because the sap is perfectly um, delicious. I wouldn't recommend actually eating the flower. I've heard some people eat the flower. They think it has medicinal qualities. I can't verify that. But I do know that the nectar, there'll be a couple drops of sweet sugary nectar that of course attracts pollinators and hummingbirds. That is delicious. And since there's so much of it growing, my kids love coming out here, popping these open and just sucking the nectar out. Especially after it rains and the plant has plenty of water, these things will have you know, a decent amount. I mean, sometimes we'll get up to like a teaspoon of um, nectar and the ants love them too. Pop the back off. I had to do it with one hand. I don't know if you can see that, but there's, I don't know, a few drops. And that's how hummingbirds do it. Just make sure whoever's doing that knows not to eat the leaves. It should be obvious. Um, online it says that they're mildly toxic which basically means if you eat too much, you'll probably throw up, but you don't really have any chance of dying unless you happen to be allergic to it. So if you have a lot of allergies, obviously you don't want to be doing stuff like this, but definitely a good forage plant if you just need a few calories of sugar when you're out hiking and don't have any food. This would be an easy way to grab yourself a hundred calories or so is to suck the juice out of you know, 50 flowers, so easy survival snack. Probably sounds creepy on the thing. Yeah, hummingbirds love them, bees love them, ants love them. I almost dropped the phone. So I have a few of those that I let live. A lot of people said that they're really hard to eradicate. I don't agree. I just cut them at the ground. And then when they come back up, I cut them at the ground again and then they usually die. But of course they plant seeds everywhere. So if you don't like having stuff growing all over the place, probably don't have these. If you're like me and just like every inch of your yard to have something growing because you love tons of green, in my opinion, they're great to have in connection with other things, especially since they're so um, insect resistant. Like right now we're having major problems with, um, with uh, Japanese beetles. And the Japanese beetles don't really like these leaves. And so if you happen to have grapevines near these, they seem to be ignored. But when you have, you know, a concentration of tons of plants that a certain bug likes eating, they'll usually get decimated. So in my opinion, just having diversity is extremely important for pest resistance, because then you're just spreading out the things that the pests want to eat. Whereas if every single thing growing in your garden is the same plant, and you happen to be unfortunate enough to get that particular um, the particular pest, the particular predator that likes eating that plant, they're probably going to decimate your entire yard. So I like to mix it up. I'm a firm believer in what's called polyculture. Instead of a monoculture, you have a polyculture, so you have a lot of different types of plants. And it makes your food forest more disease, re disease and insect resistant because you're not concentrating your entire focus on one particular plant species. It's a pretty good flavor too. The couple drops that are in there, I would say they're probably a, about twice as sweet as soda. 
I mean, there's not much in there. A little bit less thick than honey. So probably about half the consistency of honey. Probably more like the consistency of like real maple syrup that you buy from the store. How it's, I mean, depends on what you buy. The kind I buy is not very viscous. It's not very thick. So it's about like that. It's perfect for hummingbirds. So hummingbird juice, if you ever make hummingbird feeder fluid, that's the stuff. If you love hummingbirds, let those go nuts. Pretty big one right here. This one actually has grapevines going across the top and they're currently actually having a uh, issue with Japanese beetles. You can see that skeletonizing some of the grapevine leaves. They don't seem to touch the trumpet vine leaves at all. Yeah, I love these flowers. And I know a lot of people online might get upset about this and tell me how invasive trumpet vines are. And I'm not telling anybody to go out and buy a trumpet vine plant. I have them wild in my yard. I never planted these, they just are native to Missouri. But I think they're gorgeous. But that doesn't mean I might not cut back a few plants. You know, I don't want it to take over the yard, like I said. But definitely some easy cover. Yeah, most of the ones that are in reach are gone because my kids love picking them off and sucking the juice out of them. Trying to get them to harvest more sustainably where they just pick off the ripe flowers. These ants love these. It's an interesting symbiosis. So a lot of these plants will have spots that they actually will secrete nectar for things like ants. And they do this because they want to be more desirable than aphids. And so this plant is also very aphid resistant in my experience, mainly because the plant's nectar is more desirable than the aphids nectar. So if aphids come along and are apparently damaging the plant, the ants will eradicate the aphids so that they can, you know, get the trumpet vine nectar as opposed to the aphid nectar. Aphids actually secrete a juice to try to incentivize ants to spread them and to not kill them. A little native bee just came out. I missed him. I have a couple native beehives solitary uh, mason hives for leaf cutters and mason bees and try to attract a whole bunch of the native solitary bees. I just love those flowers. And I get it, some people hate them. Depends on if you're a go in the backyard once a month type of gardener or go in the backyard few times a week or more type of gardener. Oop, another native bee, I don't know if you saw that, just went in. There he is. Good source of nectar. But anyway, like I was saying, if you go in the garden a lot, it's pretty easy to, you know, if you have plants growing where you don't want them to grow, walk around with a pair of scissors and just deadhead everything you don't want to be there and pretty quickly you'll not have anything growing that you don't want to be growing. It doesn't take an incredible amount of maintenance. This video is probably getting too long, so I'm gonna cut it off. I think you get the idea. Trumpet vines.